throughout our lives, we always want more, more of something. But we're always told too much of a good thing isn't always what's best for you. Sometimes we're even told too much of a good thing could kill you in the case of like too much sugar and give you diabetes. But the thing is, according to Mae West, too much of a good thing can be wonderful. For example, if you hear a new song on the radio and you start to like that song, you're gonna play that song every 10 minutes of every day <laughs> until you are sick and tired of that song. Because it provides you happiness. And that's the key thing, is happiness. If there's anything you can find that'll make you happy, you're gonna want that thing over and over and over. If I go to Baskin Robbins, I'm not gonna get one sip of ice cream. <laughs> I'm gonna get two. I'm gonna come back later, I'm gonna get a third one. Because it's what makes me happy. If you, if a team is, if you're a baseball team scores 10 runs, they're not gonna wanna stop. They're gonna want more and more because as long as they keep scoring, they're winning, they're happy. And that's what matters most. If a basketball team makes it to the NCAA tournament one time, they're gonna wanna come back every single year because that's what makes them happy. Too much of a good thing can never be bad. Because in cases like too much sugar provides diabetes, at one point you loved that sugar. You were, you were the one that went out of your way to get that sugar because at that point in time, that's what you wanted, that's what made you happy. If too much of a good thing could be bad, it's only because you didn't think about it from the beginning. And still, the consequences later in life of it, you'll live with it and you'll look back and you'll think, I had those memories. I remember getting that third scoop of ice cream. Totally worth it. And there's, there was, there's a story of a man who suddenly got everything he ever wanted and he lived happily ever after. So if I got a million dollars in my bank account, I'm gonna be happy. <laughs> not, not gonna be a tear in my eye at all, except for happiness too. <laughs> <laughs> but to conclude, if you have too much of one, too much of a good thing, take advantage of it. All right, Alonzo, let me start with a couple of things that I think uh, you'll probably realize are problematic. Uh, organizationally, it's just all over the place. You've got some good ideas here, but there's not really a plan, a structure, a preview. So uh, they, they just seem like they're coming up randomly. And I, I don't understand why this is a tough thing for people. If you pick two or three things to talk about, you're going to know that's what you're talking about. You can get into the details a lot more on those two or three things once you get going on them. If, if you just, if you say, well, I've got some things, I'm going to make those points, and then you think of another one and you throw it in, and then you think of another one and you throw it in, it just feels really like you're stretching instead of focusing, and, and I think that's the way the content goes here. Not bad ideas, but they just get a little repetitive. I was a little confused, though, because at first, 
I thought that you were going the opposite direction with the uh, quote uh, when you said, you know, too much of anything could be wonderful, and you started to say, you know, how that's true, you know, at first when you have a song, and I thought, oh, he's disagreeing because then you burn out on that song and you were going to be talking about that because let's face it, how much, call me maybe, if I never hear it again, <laughs> will be one of those things. You know, the first 5,000 times I heard it was really entertaining, but the second 5,000 times I heard it, I was just going, shut up, let's change the channel, you know, that sort of thing. So I thought that's kind of where you were going, but then it, that turns out not to be where you were going. You just said, no, go for it, have more, have more ice cream, score more, make it back to the tournament, you know, all those kinds of things. And that's that's okay, but I think you need to be clear that that's the position that you're going to take at the beginning. So it really felt a little bit like you were switching up what you were saying during the speech. On the presentation, there's nothing that's really problematic except one thing that I thought I wanted to, to mention, and that is the pacing. It re, you know similar to what Manuel was doing before, it feels a little slow and deliberate. Not not ex, you know it, it, it's not like. You're Forrest Gump slow. It's not like you've slowed down and I'm, I'm not a smart man kind of thing. It's, but it does feel like there's no energy. And even though your voice is strong and you've got good inflection in it, there's a, the lack of energy comes from the pacing. And I think that that's where you kind of trip over yourself a little bit. All right, well, we've run out of time. Everybody's watching the clock. We'll start with the prepared speeches on Thursday.